The world is a mess. I inherited a mess. Whether it's the Middle East, whether it's North Korea, whether it's so many other things, whether it's in our country, horrible trade deals, I inherited a mess. That was President Trump last February criticizing the situation he inherited from President Obama. From Iraq to Libya to Syria, the U.S. is confronting crises that first blossomed during an earlier administration. Is the Trump administration fighting the last administration's wars, and is it making wise choices as it does so? Charles Krauthammer is an author and columnist. He joins us now to untangle the Gordian knot of foreign policy tonight. Charles, I'm, I'm legitimately confused. I thought that our main opponent there and everywhere was the Sunni extremist organization ISIS and now I pick up the paper and see that we're shooting planes down from a government that is also fighting ISIS that is representing the Shiites and I, so is the main threat in Syria the Assad regime or is it ISIS sincerely I don't know well here, this is like the last year of the second world war we're all fighting the Nazis but we know they're finished and a lot of the maneuvering in that last year was between us and the Soviet side for what it would look like after the Nazis were finished. Right now, ISIS, which is the main enemy, is about to be driven out of Mosul, which will mean that Iraq has been cleared of them. And what's going on now is the encircling of Raqqa, their last stronghold, their base in Syria. Within six months, probably a year, both of them will be gone. And everybody knows that. So what's going on right now in Syria is the maneuvering. The Iranians want to inherit the territory that's going to be lost by ISIS. They, and they showed that by launching rockets today over Iraq into Syria, ostensibly at ISIS as retaliation for the terror attacks, but really a demonstration to Saudi Arabia, the Sunni Arabs, and everybody in the region of their reach. The Iranian objective is to have to inherit the territory of ISIS, which gives them control of the entire northern part of the Middle East, from Iran through Iraq through Syria to the Mediterranean. The Persians have not had that in 2,000 years, and it is within their grasp. So the Russians, the Iranians, the Syrian regime are all on one side, and the maneuver is to make sure they get the territory that ISIS loses. Our interest is to make sure that doesn't happen. That's why we attack the forces of Assad who are hitting our allies on the ground, who are the Kurds, and there are these Syrian rebels who together with the Kurds are closing in on Raqqa. Our objective, you were asking earlier, what's our objective in the region? It is simple. We don't want to see Assad have a puppet regime which will be run by Iran and Russia in control of all of Syria. We don't want them to inherit the ISIS territory. We would like to see that held by pro-Western, pro-Saudi, Sunni forces. And that would mean one settlement would be that you get a rump regime in Damascus running the west side of Syria, essentially, whereas the middle of Syria is controlled by the rebels. That is a far, sort of less, a far more, a far more advantageous strategic ending to all this. This, I think, is pretty and high level chess. Yeah, I mean, it's way too high level to be real, in my opinion. So the two, two sides will just some sort of kind of co-occupy co the country and not continue a civil war. Why wouldn't they be at war with each other perpetually forever? They might be, except that if Assad and the Russians decide the war is not winnable. Assad is a minority uh, sect, very much hated right. in the area, maybe 10%, essentially affiliated with the Shiites, the Alawites. For it to control all of Syria perpetually is perpetual war. It's not in the Russian interest. The Russians might accept a settlement in which there is a de facto division of the country into ethnic enclaves, which would probably be for the Syrian people and for us the best outcome. Boy, that is, uh, that is high level. If that, <laughs> Charles, thank you for that. I appreciate it. My pleasure.